Hey everyone, we're live with another Realm Smith painting tutorial. Um, today we uh, posted a poll on our Facebook page um, to find out what you guys wanted us to paint. Um, and so before we get started here, we're going to check on that vote to find out exactly what we'll be painting. But first, um, a couple announcements. First off, we made 2,000 subscribers on, fa on YouTube. Um, we are so grateful and thankful. I can't believe um, we are where we are and have uh, made it to where we are, but it's all because of you guys. So thank you so much for your continued support. Definitely um, make sure that you spread the word, let people know, anybody who might enjoy our channel, um, whether it be the live tutorials or uh, the live gameplay sessions or even our pre-recorded tutorials. Um, we love the community and we love you guys to be a part of it, part of it and we can't do it without you, without you. So, so thank you so much for um, the support. Uh, you can check us out on Facebook at uh, slash Realmsmith TV and on YouTube at slash Realmsmith um, to uh, support us. So thank you. Um, second announcement that we have is, well, <laughs> we can't quite make an announcement, but we have something really big coming uh, down the pipe in the next week or so. So please stay tuned. It's pretty massive for us. It's an awesome opportunity, and I can't wait to share it with you guys and, and all the community. Can't say much more about it yet, um, but uh, we're definitely looking forward, looking forward to letting you know. So we're going to go on Facebook right now and find out uh, what you guys decided we will be painting today. Um, so let's just take a look. Hmm. Let's find out. Getting on the Facebook. So the two options um, were the City Guards, which um, from uh, WizKids Deep Cuts Minis. It's a little dark there. I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> um, and the other option was from, uh, also from WizKids Deep Cuts. And that was... Uh, the townspeople. And so we've got a dancing girl here, as you can see. Really cool. And a kind of farmer type. He's kind of tending to the crops. And then we also had these two uh, guard minis um, that we were looking to paint. I'm going to do a bit of batch painting. Last time we did a three-hour batch, batch painting session. Today we're probably going to try and stick to two hours and two minis so hopefully that'll be the case well drum roll let's find out who won uh the townsfolk won um thanks guys everyone that voted it was really close uh the city guards are at 48 percent and the um townspeople are at 52 percent just squeezed by sorry tim kearney if you're watching i know you really had your heart set on uh, the guard as well as Melanie, my fiance, she really wanted the guards. But the public has spoken. Uh, the villagers are restless. And so let's get down to some painting. Let me just settle in here, let everybody know we're here, and we can go from there. One sec. I hope you guys are having a great weekend. I just came back from Mexico, so I'm a little I'm a little tanned. I know you all feel so bad for me. Just letting everybody know that we're here and then we will get a move on. All right. Uh, 
as always, folks, um, oh, uh, Curtis Ellis is on YouTube is saying, I am just about to start collecting the equipment to paint my first mini this month. I'm really nervous. Curtis, it's not as crazy as you might think. Uh, painting minis, uh, if you follow a few simple steps, uh, we've got lots of painting tutorials on our website. Uh, sorry, not on our website. Duh, uh, on YouTube and on Facebook uh, to help you along. So if you need any help, uh, definitely tune into our live tutorials as well as the stuff that we have on there. And hopefully that can help you uh, help a little bit. Um, there's lots of really simple techniques. It's not that difficult, especially with a lot of the kind of advanced paint lines that are available, especially from Citadel um, and Vallejo for sure. So don't, uh, yeah, don't worry about that. Um, all right, folks. Well, we're live. Uh, again, spread the word. Let everybody know that we're here. Um, and we're going to get moving. Let's do this. All right. So unfortunately, sorry, guards. You're out. What you're seeing here on my uh, workstation is actually the set piece for our upcoming live stream gameplay session. Um, the players will be visiting the Yawning Portal in Waterdeep. And so you can see the portal in the background there. Uh, that portal, uh, we're doing a bit of a um, tutorial in the next week or so, uh, hopefully on Monday, uh, is the plan. Um, so tune in for that for sure. All right. So let's get moving here. Put these over to the side. Okay, so we've got the dancing girl and we've got the, the kind of farmer um, gardener type guy. We are going to try and batch paint these as much as possible just to show you guys how easy it is to paint multiple minis uh, kind of at the same time. Um, and hopefully that can kind of speed up your paint, your speed painting game a little bit. All right, so first off, we're gonna prep these minis a little bit. Uh, and in order to do so, I like to use a um, tool that I have that is that I can't find. That's awesome. I'm really prepped, guys. Like, I'm really ready <laughs> for this. There it is. All right, so it's the uh, mold line removal tool from Citadel. Uh, it's an amazing tool. Um, as you can see here, it, uh, it's really simple. It's just got a number of different types of edges, rounded edge, uh, straight edge. And what we do is basically go around the mini and um, just remove mold lines. And so mold lines are the little lines along the miniature that are left from the molding process. Um, these WizKids minis come pre-primed with Vallejo primer, which is great. I don't have to go out in my cold garage. Um, it's not super cold today, actually. I'm lying a little bit. Um, but it is still like plus five degrees Celsius here in in balmy Milton, Ontario, Canada. Um, but you can see here even like some there's like a like a hair or something that was kind of stuck on the mini when it got primed. Um, as you can see there. And uh, so we're just going along the sides here and basically just scraping those lines right off. There aren't a lot of them, a lot of them on these minis. And I've said before, every time I do one of these tutorials that these minis, I'm not too concerned about them looking fabulous. They're not, you know, I'm not entering them into any contests. They basically just have to be tabletop quality, which means that people are probably gonna see them at this distance while playing. And so we're not too worried about it. This mini uh, came with a, f a few more issues. Um, and so I'm going to address some of those before we get started here. Um, also, there's a little bit of gunk left over from the priming process. But for the most part, these minis are pretty great. And by pretty good, I, I mean really great. I really enjoy painting these WizKids minis. All right, so there's your dancing girl. I don't think I'm going to do much more cleanup than that. There's nothing major going on there, so. As well, guys, make sure that you, uh, guys and gals, make sure that you chat. Um, let us know uh, what you're up to, what you're doing. Uh, really want to hear from you um, and, uh, and hear what you have to say. If you have any questions or comments or anything like that, please let us know. Uh, and I'd love to walk through, or, or just even if, if there's a technique that you want me to kind of clarify or, or work through again, 
um, I'd be more than happy to uh, to do that for you guys as we as we move along here. So I'm going to go into the deepest recesses right now, and I'm going to paint um, the base coats that we have to into the deepest parts of these minis. Um, right now, I think it's the skin, so I'm going to go ahead and base coat this skin tone, um, starting with uh, I'm using mostly Citadel paints today, uh, Bugman's Glow. Um, is a great base paint that I use for skin all the time. And so I'm going to go ahead and base coat that. I'm going to use a layer brush from Citadel for that. Um, I use Citadel stuff, not necessarily because it's the best, even though I think in some cases it is. Um, I use it mostly because uh, it's readily available. Um, almost every hobby store or uh, gaming store will carry Citadel paints. Uh, they've got great distribution, so it's just easy to get your hands on it. I'm also using their Citadel um, model holder. It makes it way easier to paint a mini without gunking it up with your fingers and muddying up the colors and such. Um, James uh, Grigoris says, is it better to paint first then mount? to the base, mount to the base, then paint will make no difference. Uh, it really depends. I, I, I tend to mount the base first, uh, something to hold on to. Otherwise, it would be difficult to, unless you're putting it on a pill bottle or a cork or something um, like most do, um, I like to put it on the base first yeah, and then just touch that up later. Um, I absolutely take unrelated questions as we work, Curtis, for sure. Um, I didn't wash them before I put them on bases probably not great um and i probably should have done that for sure uh <laughs> but uh, i'm also afraid that if i do wash these that i will lose some of that uh primer um and didn't really have the time i just wanted to jump in here so i haven't had any issues with painting these um right out of the box and then just sealing them after i, I haven't had any issues with with paint coming off of them um for sure so i'm not too worried about that at all Remember again, guys, to uh, definitely say hi to us on Facebook um, and on YouTube. Um, chat is open on both channels. Love to hear from you guys. Uh, again, any questions while I go, anything that you might have um, uh, or want clarification on that we've covered or techniques that we're kind of covering in our in our uh, tutorial here uh, as we go. Also unrelated questions, anything about the channel or what we do or D&D in general. Um, we love to chat, so. Yeah, I use liquid green stuff or n typical green stuff for cracks on minis. Um, these don't usually have a lot of space. And again, uh, these are regular townsfolk, so I'm never really concerned about um, cracks or, or, or filling those gaps on these. Um, I play Warhammer as well, um, 40K specifically. Um, and so I really enjoy um, painting, and I take a bit more time with those just because there's fewer of them and it's a bit more of a showcase kind of hobby, uh, and so I tend to uh, definitely fill the gaps on those more. Now, when I'm applying these, ba base, applying these base coats, especially to these um, kind of more recessed areas, I'm not too concerned about getting it everywhere else uh, at this stage, just because um, I will be covering those areas. So you don't have to really worry about being too careful at this stage. Um, okay, so we've got... The belly, I'll go to the arm here. And when I when I load my brush, I tend to put my brush uh, kind of at an angle on my uh, palette here, as you can see, and then I roll it with my fingers. So just roll it off just to get a nice point as much as possible. And then just drop your brush all over yourself and your workstation um, because nothing better than a paint covered workstation, all right? Uh, where's everybody from? I'd love to hear where people are in the world. I, I'm in Canada. It's been freaking cold. I just came back from Mexico on a family trip, and it was awesome. And it was hard to come back to this, but it is warmer today than it has been, so that's kind of nice.
Eric Phillips, I'm having a bit of a hard time kind of seeing my chat here, so I don't know what's going on. I'd love to reply to your chat, but I'm having a hard time doing so. Give me one sec. Facebook is acting up for me. I don't know why. Give me one sec. I'm just rebooting Facebook here in my browser. I tend to talk a lot in these tutorials and then it really puts me behind. And then these two hour challenges that I do for painting a mini tend to, I, I tend to run out of the time that I need to finish them. So, but I do love chatting with you guys and answering questions. That's all part of it. That's why we do this. We've got uh, uh, lots of questions here. Uh, Andrew, uh, you're asking, uh, what's a tavern built out of? Um, it's built out of a set from Worldworks Games. Uh, it's papercraft. And so basically you um, purchase the files online, uh, drive through RPG and their subsidiaries. You can pick them up there through the worldworksgames.com site. Um, and then once you've purchased them, you basically just print them off either at home. I print them at Staples just because they have really good quality paper and the printers are good. And I don't have a decent enough printer at home just yet to be able to print them myself. So I print them at Staples, which isn't the most cost effective way for sure. Um, but I like the results that I get from there. So, um, and then you cut them out and paste them up and then put them all together. And it's totally modular as you can probably tell. So that's the skin color on her we're going to switch over to our farmer now obviously this holder isn't as great when you're switching between minis but that's okay again we're batch painting a little bit here folks just to kind of give you an idea of how to get all of this done quicker if you kind of paint your minis as if they were on an assembly line and so you're doing kind of similar colors at the same time across multiple minis at this stage i'm base coating all of the recesses or all the deeper kind of recessed areas first um so that i don't muck up the higher areas later um, but we're just base coating here with a bugman's glow which is a citadel citadel base paint from games workshop nebraska welcome amy from nebraska Hero Forge are awesome. We use a lot of Hero Forge stuff uh, for our PC minis in our live stream. Brazil, tudo bem? Tudo bem? I'm Portuguese. Uh, so uh, greetings from Brazil. Um, Yanni Portal video isn't live yet. It will be live. Um, we're shooting for Monday. So let's uh, let's hope that we can we can make that happen for you on Monday. That'd be awesome. Um, we definitely want to get that out to you guys. I know people are definitely looking forward to that. So. Um, we got uh, Kurt Ellis from Chicago, James from Montana. Um, it's it, I I built it, uh, James. It's it's a three D kit from Worldworks Games. I was saying it's a papercraft uh, kit. Um, it's a tavern set that they offer on there. So basically, I printed it myself and then cut it all out and then built it from there. So it's kind of like a papercraft print your own DIY set. Which are great. We use a lot of. When I first started off, I'd love to 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 be able to um, craft all my own buildings. They just take too long. And so what I decided to do is I took basically a month off of our tutorials and our channel just to build up uh, a paper craft collection for our um, live gameplay stream. Well, actually, for our game, and then we decided to to broadcast them later. But um, we just wanted to make sure that we kind of had that critical mass starting point. Uh, and then, you know, just build basically showcase pieces because papercraft is is way quicker. Um, not necessarily cheaper, but often, you know, um, similar in price. 
and um, and you know the, the result is pretty it's pretty great so all right Facebook just does not want to participate cooperate here uh, Eric, uh, Citadel paints do tend to dry up, um, but you can use them fairly, like if, if it's completely dried and solid, then yeah, there's no, there's no real saving it. Um, but if it's still gloopy or gloppy or whatever, um, you can absolutely still, uh, get in there and, um, with some water, mix it up again and ma make it new. I know there are some techniques for kind of, uh, revitalizing paints or, or, or whatever, um, but I'm not too sure what those are um but if there's anybody in the channel or in the chat that knows basically how to do that a bit better then i'd love to hear from you um we're gonna go ahead and i'm gonna do kind of an Averland sunset color on his tunic there uh, Averlin sunset is another citadel base paint um which i use quite often uh base for yellow almost all the time Hey, greetings from Berlin, Yvonne. Actually, my uh, I have a uh, my cousin um, works in Berlin at a at an app development studio, um, and he loves it there. Welcome from Berlin. All right, so we're gonna get in here with Averland Sunset. Again, I'm not worried now about the, the, the unpainted areas. What I am more concerned about is the um, skin areas because we just base coated those. We don't want to have to go over them again um, later. So I am being cautious around the areas that we've already painted, but not super cautious around the areas that we haven't, especially the higher areas. And so, you know, this strap coming across the chest, not worried about it right now at all. Um, because we'll be able to get in there later and deal with it. And these do have colors um, that you can go with. Now that I'm looking at this, um, maybe I would have rather have gone with kind of a um, a whiter, kind of lighter color on the shirt there. Um, but we'll stick with yellow. It's a rich color. That's fine. So we're going to continue that yellow color out onto the sleeves. You can see that the model is a little mucked up on the back of the arm there. But again, uh, I just want to get these on the table. And so we're doing, you know, decent, simple techniques that will get it to beyond tabletop kind of quality, but not perfect. We're not too concerned about these looking incredible. Um, it's more about speed and the best that we can get in the least amount of time sort of situation. Um, Really super simple techniques. And with Citadel washes um, and, and even some of the other paint lines, all the washes and stuff that they have, it makes, you know, painting these these minis really great, really easy. I also water down all of my paints um, when applying them. I don't, um, I, I just find that they flow better when you do. If you guys like what we're doing here, um, we have uh, a number of painting and crafting tutorials on our YouTube page and on our Facebook page. Make sure that you like and you follow those pages, uh, as well as hitting that little bell icon on our YouTube page so that when we release anything that you will get notified uh, on that. Um, we do a number of different things, including live gameplay sessions every other Monday right now. Um, where, for, uh, you know... Myself and four of my good buddies play D and D in our game cave, which between you and me is in my garage, but it doesn't look like it. You guys head over there and check it out. Portugal, Tajbang.
Um, I buy all my all these minis in, in stores. You can go to Miniature Market and buy them separately or any hobby store that carries D&D &D, um, um, materials should be able to carry or should carry these uh, minis. Uh, they have a, a painted line and a pre-painted line from WizKids. You can also buy them online from Amazon and, and another uh, various retailers. Um, let me just check that out. Okay, we're going to go into um, the pants here. I'm going to use like a dryad bark which is kind of like a, a muted uh, wood color or something I use for muted wood all the time. Again, the base paint, the base colors are just a little thicker than the, um, than the layer paints uh, and tend to go on nice and smooth with way fewer, um, way fewer uh, coats. We play 5e, Eric. Apple Barrel, I don't think I've actually ever heard of them. Curtis, love to hear more about it. All right, Dryad Bark here. We're gonna go in and just muck this right up. Just get it in there. Just forcefully <laughs> paint this into that area. Now, the problem with this mini holder is that sometimes you can't get into those areas. This is why some people like to um, mount their minis on like a paper clip drilled into the bottom of the mini um, so that you can kind of get into these areas. I'm not too concerned. Once again, I just want to get these on the table. I'm not looking to win any. I'm not looking to win any um, competitions with these minis. I actually missed part of his shirt in there. That is just unacceptable. So I'm going to have to go back here with Averlin Sunset and do that again. This is the only area that I'm going to do this dryad bark. Um, the nice thing about these uh, uh, pre-primed minis is they're pre-primed pretty light in color. And so it's actually fairly easy um, to water down your paints just a little bit and so that they act as a thick wash. So then it adds natural uh, highlights and shadows in the clothing already. So you're almost kind of not skipping a step, but it's just making that easier and less work later. And I'm just literally jamming my brush into that area just to make sure that I get all of that yellow in there. All right. There is no yellow on our gypsy girl, our dancing girl. So we're just going to leave her the way she is right now. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use like a scrag brown color for his hat and his coat, um, which is kind of the next step here. Oh, I missed another yellow area right under here. <laughs> Happens often. Oh yeah, apple, uh, apple barrel. So any craft paints, uh, I would stay away from those. Um, for for mini painting. Uh, the reason I say that is just because the quality of the paints, the way that they go onto the model, I use uh, like dollar store or Walmart brand or even Michael's brand craft paints, the cheap stuff for all of our crafting uh, materials. But when it comes to minis, I just find that the good stuff, it's worth spending that little extra on the good stuff um, for again, the way that it interacts. You're saving a lot of time with the way that it interacts with the model uh, and the materials. On the model. Okay, we're gonna grab Scrag Brown. Scrag Brown is actually my favorite brown color. Um, just the way that it goes on is really nice and smooth. You can water it down so it's a bit of a of a wash, um, like so. Water it down a little bit, and then I'm gonna paint this right on his coat, like so. And uh, you'll, you, you guys will see that I'm moving from paint to paint very quickly. These paints take a while to dry. Um, oh, sorry, don't take long to dry, I should say. Uh, they dry really quickly. Now, there's a bit of a, of a pool there of yellow, so I'm just going to skip that. I'll come back to it uh, in a bit. But by the time I'm done, all these brown areas across both miniatures, that'll be dry, and then I'll be able to go back in there. Um, but they dry very quickly. And depending on where you are, I'm in a cold basement, so it'll take a little bit longer to dry, but it's also fairly dry down here right now. 
So if you're in a more humid part of the world, your drying times will vary. But I'm just going in and I'm roughing in all of this brown. Uh, it's important to keep the end uh, the end game in mind when you're painting, um, for sure. You um, at this stage when you're base coating, it just looks like basically like Disney colors that you're throwing on here, um, and just really kind of thick, blocky, bright primary colors. Um, the magic occurs when you start to um, add the washes and do some of your edge highlighting, which you guys will see it all come together at that point. Um, but at this stage, you're really just blocking in all the major, all the major color areas. I'm almost regretting put the, putting this on the holder at this stage because I'm not able to get under there as I'd like to. I may take it off again. And a lot of this stuff you kind of figure out as you go. I'm also, when I paint, I rest my, my brush hand, like my pinky on the holder or on the mini if I'm just painting a mini, uh, a mini off a holder, just because it stabilizes my hand and allows me to paint a little cleaner. Um, Curtis, I would, uh, I got a question from Curtis on, on YouTube here, um, regarding primers, uh, for my, uh, Warhammer stuff, I use dark primer. The reason I do that is because a lot of the models have dark armor. And so you're dealing with a lot of kind of the shadowy areas, uh, and darker colors, uh, right away. And it's kind of saving you a bit of time. Um, and, but with these... Uh, I actually, I've started using lighter primers. I used to use black for everything. Uh, I started using lighter primers on kind of townspeople and more colorful minis or minis that will be more colorful in the end. Um, just because uh, the the color, it doesn't take as many coats to get that that out. So basically the, the type of primer that you use, in my opinion, should be based more so on your end, uh, your intended end result. Um, you know, Citadel has multiple different color primers now they have reds and, and greens and and grays and silvers and all this kind of stuff and they do that just because you know find out what the, the majority of your of your mini will be based um and so if it's a if it's a if you're painting a i don't know a, a blood angel for example um for warhammer which are all red armor like almost entirely red uh then you would use kind of a red primer um, and then that will save you time in the end. If you're painting skeletons, then a white primer would be great because then you could just literally brush a, uh, a wash over it and pretty much be done. You brush a wash over a skeleton that's primed white, and then you take a light color, um, like a bleached bone um, or a shapti bone, I guess it's called now, or even like a white, and then you just dry brush it over that wash. And all of a sudden, you've got a complete skeleton. So, all right. So that's his coat. I think it's pretty good. Oh, I'm just gonna get into this little area in here. There, done. Okay, so he's done there. That color is done. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna do scrag brown. I'm basically, gonna do his boots, his hat, his little pack, all the same color. A little later. I'm going to switch over to the gypsy here just to make sure that there's no areas here that I want to make scrag brown. Um, I don't think there is. What I am going to do is take the dancing girl and I'm going to do her um, her shirt color, which is like a, uh, maybe I'll do the reds actually. Go in here and do some reds. I paint her somewhat close to what is on the package here. Yeah, no, I'm gonna do her, her shirt. So I'm actually gonna use a, 
in order to kind of base coat her her shirt area, I'm going to use a Rakar flesh. And then from there, I'm just going to use a wash, which will head into the recesses and provide some shadow. Still having a hard time with my comments here on um, on Facebook, guys. I apologize if you guys are asking questions and I'm not catching them. Um, I'll absolutely let you know once that's fixed. Here, and I can I can get in there. It's just not. Just not working for me as well as it should. Love if you guys uh, would uh, just want to stay kind of up to date, up to speed on our everything that we do. Um, definitely follow and like our Facebook page, where you're probably watching this now. Um, and make sure you follow so that you get notifications about what we do uh, kind of on a weekly basis. We usually put two or three videos out a week, um, whether it be a live video or a gameplay video or something like that. And then also uh, subscribe on Facebook, on YouTube, sorry, youtube.com slash realmsmith. We have a ton of crafting videos uh, for terrain as well as a bunch of painting stuff. We haven't done any crafting videos in a while, but we are releasing a tutorial for the portal, that pit you see in the background, um, hopefully on Monday is the plan. So right now all I'm doing is I'm going in here and I'm painting her shirt, Rakarth Flesh, which is kind of an off-white color. I'm not painting it right to the bottom because that's actually part of kind of her her dress. The white is just in the front here for the most part. Um, and then her sleeves as well. So I want to get behind, back behind here. Um... Right, that's that for that. I think I'm gonna continue on her and I'm gonna paint the red parts of her clothing. So I'm gonna go with a, a base coat of Mephiston red maybe? No, I'm not. I'm gonna go with Rhinox Hide. I want it to be kind of a deep, deep red for this. So I'm gonna go with Rhinox Hide because it will allow us to um, really give it kind of some some crazy depth. That's a Rhinox hide. It's a, again, Citadel base paint. It's nice and thick, more pigment. So it goes on a little smoother with less coats. So we're going to go red down at the bottom here. Again, not too concerned about the higher areas or the... the... Now this looks brown. I just like using it for red base coats. trying to do kind of like a two hour challenge here. Let's see if we can make that work. Or we paint both of these minis in two hours. Is it possible? Can we do it? We'll find out. Now I don't have this on the holder just because I really want to get down here under the dress and it's hard to do that when it's on the holder, obviously. Facebook does not want to cooperate right now. Don't 
understand. Now, oftentimes with these minis, I'll just go straight to red and then just use a wash. But for this one, I've decided to start with the Rhinox, which is just an additional step, which will just give it some more depth when I put the red on later. Now, again, we're looking at speed here. We're looking at trying to paint minis to a, you know, more than decent level or quality quicker um, so that we can get more minis on the table. You know, I tend to overthink painting a little bit, you know, oh, what color should I use? Uh, and you think about it so long and so often that you never end up, you just procrastinate and you never end up actually getting minis on the table, um, which, you know, what's the point of having unpainted minis that you really want to paint if you're interested in painting them um, and not even having them you know on the table to, to enjoy and to play so Get some more on my brush here. I'm really trying to sort out this Facebook issue. Don't know why it's being stubborn. Just getting in here, just jamming my brush in again, not worried about the other areas that are still primed because they will be covered later with different colors. And I think I'm just going to use that brown on the, you know what, I'm gonna use it just on her headpiece, but I'm not gonna use it on her shirt just because I don't want to risk messing that up. Oh, went a little too low. Gonna have to touch that up again later. And that'll happen a lot. I do lots of touch-ups. When you're trying to be fast, you're gonna make some mistakes. It's really no big deal. Okay, we're gonna take a break on her. We'll go back to our farmer. Sorry guys, just give me a sec here. Just looking at what you guys are what you guys are saying. Okay, so back to the farmer. We're going to use uh, a Morn Fang Brown on his boots. If I can find it. Morn Fang Brown. Here, another base coat color. I like to just mix up the browns. I could use brown across the whole thing, but obviously you're going to get a way more interesting model or mini if you use 
different shades of brown across the mini for different purposes. We're gonna probably wash it all with the same wash color, but um, but it just gives you a bit of, of depth, makes you feel a bit more like an actual person. Here we go. I'm actually going to take him off the holder here to get the rest of his boot colors because I'm having a bit of a hard time reaching that area. You can see that the paint that I'm using is a bit too watery now. So if you, if you put it on like this and then it just kind of recedes, then you're a bit of an issue. So I need a bit more paint on my brush. Hi, Chachi. Uh, I'm assuming you pronounce it Chachi, is it? Um, I get it from any, uh, I got it from a hobby store near me that sells, uh, I actually got it from GW, sorry. Um, from a Games Workshop store. I, I don't know where you're from or if they have Games Workshop stores there. Um, but that's where I got that mini holder. It's awesome. It's affordable. Uh, it's, you know, significantly made my painting game better um, by having it. Uh, so, but if you can't get it from a, from one of their shops, if you don't have any in your, in your area, then you can order them online at Games Workshop. It's website. Um, just look up Games Workshop on Google, and you'll be able to find them. No problem. All right. All right. So boots are done. Boots are base coated, and then time to get back on the hat. Throw this into the base holder. Again, super easy to use, even when you're you're switching between minis. You guys, have any questions, comments? Let me know where you guys are from, even uh, unrelated to painting. If you guys have any thoughts on D&D &D or questions about our live stream or our crafting tutorials, please feel free to ask. That's what we're here for. Or if you have any techniques that perhaps you find helpful or, or that you prefer, I'd love to hear from you. Constantly learning. I think that's the most important thing about this, this hobby and getting better at, at painting minis is constantly learning, constantly watching tutorials. Got lots of friends um, online that do wonderful work in this community uh, that you can learn from. And everyone's just very approachable, I'm finding, um, as we kind of run our channel. For those of you guys out there, I'll do some shout outs. Um, when it comes to crafting channels, uh, one of my top channels, and, and and to be honest with you, the one that really got us, or really motivated me to to do what I do, um, especially on the terrain stuff, is uh, Jeremy Pillipow at uh, Black Magic Craft. Really great stuff, and super high quality tutorials, um, and even I mean his just his techniques and the things that he makes are pretty awesome. Just want to shout out Jeremy. On that, uh, Hanker Infernail at Runehammer. It's got some really amazing stuff as well. Um, Wylock has some great tutorials. I'm going to switch here actually to my um, my detail brush for, for this pack, just for the strap. And the, the brush that I'm using is the Artificer Layer Brush from Citadel. Um, Wylock uh, has an awesome channel on YouTube, as well as DM Scotty. I mean, there's so many of them. Crafting Muse, um, she came, I guess, on, onto the, onto the, the, I guess, I don't want to say the stage, <laughs> onto the scene the same time as I did. Uh, Vanessa makes some really great, great stuff. But there's so many channels out there. And then, apart from crafting stuff, I mean, Cody Lewis from Taking 20, 
and Tim Kearney um, from Tabletop Terrors. Also another really great uh, painting resource is um, Richard Ankney, I believe is how you pronounce his last name. Uh, they do paint uh, Happy Little Minis, I think. That's the name of the channel. Uh, and they do some really great live painting tutorials regularly. I think weekly. Um, and they've got some really great stuff too. So check all of that out, guys. Definitely know, let me know where you guys are from. We had Portugal represented in my homeland. Well, I was born in Canada, but all of my family's from Portugal. And uh, I speak Portuguese fluently, so got to represent. And then we had some people from Brazil and Montana and Nebraska. Just love to hear where you guys are all from. It's pretty crazy how this um, how this hobby brings us all together. Okay, so I'm just finishing painting his pack and his uh, little, little strap. And I'm going to go in here and also paint his belt this Morn Fang brown color as well. Just, I'm already at it. It's a different color than is already on the mini. So, just like that. The last thing really for him that we need to base coat, I'm going to go in here and just add a bit more on the front of this boot, is his uh, little rake thing. and his beard, which we'll also do. All right, so I'm gonna take a break from him for a sec. Go back to our dancing girl. Just gonna check in here on YouTube. See what you guys are saying. Yeah, we do blending in almost all of our videos. Uh, I'm going to do like videos on specific um, techniques and stuff, which we'll do soon. Oh, cool. Yeah, we were also f featured on um, Andrew Armstrong's channel, Don Forgecast, as well. Uh, did you say Cody? We were in one of Cody's videos? Curtis? Or was that on the Dawn Forge cast video? Oh, no problem, Vanessa. <laughs> there she is, guys. Um, definitely check out Vanessa on the Crafting Muse on her channel. They've got some. She's got some pretty great stuff. One of my favorites, Vanessa, was that. Um, I guess it was like a coffin or a sarcophagus that you did. Pretty freaking cool. All right, so we're going to go in and do all the red here. I got to speed this up. I'm talking so much. I have just over an hour left. Man. These tutorials go by fast. Hey, John. Welcome, buddy. One thing I'm finding, and I'm sure Vanessa will... And John will um, will echo uh, the sentiment, but is that um, I'm just finding that the crafting community in general, like all the crafters, there isn't a lot of ego, um, at least not that I've found so far. Everybody's super nice and welcoming, very supportive, and uh, and it's been a real pleasure to be part of that community. Um, we all really do like each other, for the most part that I've that I've seen. I don't know, maybe I'm fairly new. I'm only you know just under a year in, so. Perhaps, you know, the rest of them have different, uh, some different experiences, but for the most part, I'm going to switch to my larger brush for this. Um, but for the most part, I've had a really great experience thus far with the community. Yeah, Storm Giant Cadaver Tomb. That thing was cool. Very, very cool. And uh, Vanessa just did, recently did a, uh, what was that? Um... A like a, a stack of wood with a with a axe in it, 
Um, I love little things like that. Just little, little prop pieces for your tabletop that just make it pop. Make, you know, the players feel like they're part of a real world. It's awesome. Really awesome. All right, so I'm just filling in all the red here over this Rhinox hide. In retrospect, it probably wasn't necessary to do this Rhinox color. Uh, I probably could have just gone straight to Mephiston red, uh, this base red, because now I'm seeing, obviously, that Rhinox is coming out. You can see I might have to do two coats of this Mephiston, um, but you learn as you go. There's no science or formula to this. I mean, they've simplified it as much as they possibly could. That That's them being Citadel with, like, base coats and layer coats and washes and dry dry colors and, and airbrush colors and all this kind of stuff. And, and they kind of have a formula of what you do where. But really, when it comes down to it, when you're at the your workstation and you're painting, you're making these decisions as you go. You're building your little world and you're deciding what goes where. Woodpile. <laughs> yeah, the woodpile. What did I call it? I don't even know. When I get in the zone here, I just babble. <laughs> now, again, at this stage, folks, it looks really messy. It's all very just... Just slopping paint on here. Um, but um, it absolutely, you know, what comes together in the later stages. Once you've got all your base coats down and you start applying, um, and you start applying layer paints and washes and all that kind of stuff, that's when the magic happens. <laughs> I called it a wood and axe little something or other. I'm sorry. <laughs> I definitely, I think Vanessa can't be your spokesperson. Um, I will shout you out, but unfortunately, I clearly don't know your brand well enough. But anyways, <laughs> Vanessa at Crafty Muse does some great work. For sure. I also saw, Vanessa, that you recently posted a, um, a link to uh, Tiny Furniture stuff and they are awesome. She is so great. Uh, they're out of Russia and they create like little, you know, miniature props for your tabletop. And the, it's brilliant, brilliant, brilliant stuff for, for I want to say almost, I guess, like years now. I've been, I've been following her and wanting to pick up some of her stuff. And I haven't yet, but I need to. Just looking at the reference here for a sec. She's got a little bit of a like like ties here that we're just gonna. I probably should be using my detail brush for this, but I'm just gonna rough them in here. And we're not, you know, with all of the the tutorials that I do on painting and stuff. I mean. Again, when I'm doing my Warhammer stuff or things that are I'm, I'm entering into contests, it's a whole other scenario. What I'm teaching you folks here is really simple techniques that anybody can do. You're basically painting by numbers, um, and you're just, you know, sure, yeah, there's, you know, brush technique and, and all of that kind of stuff. But with practice, I'm pretty convinced that anybody with any artistic, at any artistic level with enough practice can do this. This is not... This is not rocket science. This is not, um, you don't have to be an artist to be able to do this. You're painting by numbers. You're adding washes, which do all of the shading and shadowing for you. It's not all that complicated. Just to let everybody out there know. I mean, I've been painting minis probably, geez, I want to say 20 years at this point. 15 to 20 years, maybe. Started off with Warhammer. Uh, actually, I started off painting the Lord of the Rings miniatures from the Citadel line when they came out originally. 
um, I loved them. Uh, and I was just really into Lord of the Rings. I didn't even play the game. I maybe played the game like three or four times. It was it was part of the the games workshop line of, of board games or mini, uh, tabletop games. And uh, I, but I just I just loved playing the minis. So I, I picked up the whole line, won a kind of a North American painting contest for GW, and got sent like four thousand dollars worth of gear, which is pretty great. I think first first prize was. Uh, first prize was a signed copy of the movie by Peter Jackson, and the second prize, which is what I won, was the uh, like four thousand dollars worth of worth of, worth of minis from from the line. And uh, I was like, yeah, I'd much rather have four thousand dollars worth of minis than a signed copy of the movie by Peter Jackson. I think, I think it'll go a longer way than just to kind of sit on my on my shelf. I love Peter Jackson, but come on. I think I, I lucked out on that one. All right, so now I'm painting the uh, the wood on her little, on her, on his. I'm still vacation brain from Mexico. Um, I'm just painting his little uh, rake or whatever that is. Maybe if somebody knows, they can let me know because it, it, it it's or the shape of a rake, but it's like a medieval rake. I don't know if it's just a medieval rake. But I'm painting the handle of it. Dryad Bark, which is um, just a kind of subdued brown color. Yeah, Curtis, the beautiful thing about minis is that you can just paint over them. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I mean, you can even strip them too. You don't necessarily have to do that. But, you know, it's not, you're not going to, yeah. You're enjoying them at home. It's it's part of the, this is just very therapeutic for me. You know, this hobby, I get in here, I get in the, I mean, obviously doing the live streaming stuff is a bit more work. But, you know, just the whole process of sitting down and painting is, is very therapeutic. I don't have to take them off this base. I know, craft uh, Vanessa. Me too. I'm uh, nothing but snow here too. Although it's warmer today, it's like plus six degrees Celsius. It's, it's like balmy near Tirana. All right, here we go. We're doing all right here. We're almost done. His little. His little rake thing. I just got to do the top area. Oh, forgot the bottom area on the bottom. Go up here. Paint in the little nub above his hand here. Uh, when it comes to actual brush technique, I like just nice, steady, solid, smooth swipes with your brush. Little, you know, smooth strokes. You're going to get a lot more done than kind of back and forth. A million times. You also don't want to gunk up the uh, detail in your mini, right? If you're if you're applying tons of paint, all those details will get uh, will get obscured. Okay, so he's done being base coated for the most part. I got to do his face there, his little beard, but I'm probably going to do that after I start to uh, highlight. All right, let's get her back on here. Now we're going to go ahead and do uh, the other color on her dress. I think I'm going to use purple, perhaps, for that. Purple? Actually, I'm going to ask you guys, what color do you think I should use for her dress? What do you think? Everybody, anybody, anybody, anybody remember that song? Uh... So here, this is what they show here. They have a brownish, muted, greenish color, which is kind of cool. 
but I think I want it to be brighter. So I think I'm going to go purple. Any thoughts? Taking votes now. I'm going to put her down and I'm taking votes. So you guys let me know. Once you guys have, once you guys have spoken, then purple would be a good, I guess. Michael, thanks, Michael. Well, so far Michael's winning in the. <laughs> in the race for the color of her dress. Actually, just gonna switch to Chrome here, folks, because Safari is not liking Facebook right now. Don't know why. So I'll make sure I can hear from you guys. Do like a green, like a light greenish. Ooh, that's a good call, James. Violet sounds good to me. John, the god. Vibrant and do an orange family. Ooh, oranges. Vanessa. I kind of think I like it. Purple or orange. Purple or orange. Oranges would be really nice, actually. Orange it is. Vanessa has spoken. I'm going with the female perspective. Sorry, boys. Okay, so chat is working way better in Chrome, so we'll go with that. <laughs> Remember to share, guys, with your friends. You can tag them in the in the chat if you think anybody would benefit from what we're doing here today. I'm gonna go really bright. I'm still fighting with it. Oh, I know I said Vanessa won, but I'm still really fighting with what color to use here. I'm going to put it down for a minute and go back to him. Okay, so we're going to wash him. We're going to use a, um, what wash do we want to use here? We're going to use Agrax Earth Shade. I think across the entire mini except for his face. I do have a yellow wash and an orange wash, but I think I'm going to use... <laughs> yeah, John, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking maybe that's why the orange and the red sound so good to me, Vanessa. Is it, it reminds me of like a salsa dancer, a flamenco dancer. I feel like I'm missing a ton of comments here on 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 the Facebook. I just feel like it's not. Ah. Chris says burnt orange darker shade for more earth tones. Yeah, burnt orange. Okay. We'll go orange. We're just going to do it. Again, right? What did I say about me overthinking colors on a regular basis? You can see that these minis here guys that we have in I say guys, because I think it's pretty universal these days, but guys, I do mean guys and gals, but these three minis that we painted, we painted them on our last live stream. It was a three-hour live stream. We got them all done in th within three hours with some batch painting techniques. So, pretty cool. 
if you ask me. All right, switching to my glaze brush. I'm running out of time here, folks. I'm talking too much. So just going to pull it out. Now, I, can, I always close my paint pots because they dry up real fast. But uh, these don't because they're the washes. They don't uh, dry up all that fast. So I actually leave it open. I often paint right out of the pot. Um, and then I'm just going to do this. So you can see I'm basically just going around the whole mini and I am giving it a good dose of wash. You want to be, sh be careful that you don't allow it to really pull up in the recesses because you don't want it to muddy up the detail um, and look dirty, really. Uh, and so you're basically just pulling the wash into the recesses until you're happy with the way that it looks. Um, make sure that you get kind of the creases between large areas. I got his hand there. I'm going to use a Reichland flesh shade, so I don't want to do that. Um, so I'll have to be careful. But you can see already how it's just really bringing some life to this mini. Um, be careful with his chest and his face. Oh, my puppy here is having dreams or nightmares or something. He's making all kinds of sounds while he's sleeping. Maybe I'll have him say hi in a bit. Last last live stream, he was uh, just barking up a storm at nothing. Just barking at the corner of the room. Some sort of ghost or something. Anyways, it was hilarious. And I'm trying to, trying to quiet him down while still looking like or appearing to be a humane owner. <laughs> be like, shut up. I'm trying to work here. People are trying to listen. It was funny in retrospect. All right. So I'm also going to go Agrax Earthshade along his little thing here. Okay. All right. So you can see I've washed him generous wash make sure it doesn't go into the recesses oh sorry just make sure it just goes into the recesses and doesn't pull up the detail forgot to do his little cap done so i'm just going to set him down and move back to our dancing girl which i have decided will be orange and red so for that i'm actually just going to go straight to troll slayer i think uh yeah, I'm going to use a Troll Slayer Orange, which is really bright. And then I'm going to wash it after. So I'm going to close up that pot now, though. Uh, Josh, I buy my miniatures from just local hobby stores. Uh, they're the uh, Wiz Kids line. Uh, they have a bunch of unpainted, both for Pathfinder and D&D. Uh, &D. Uh, as well as just their deep cuts line and um, just that hobby stores usually carry them. If not, Miniature Market Online carries them uh, as well as a number of other retailers. So you just look up WizKids D&D uh, &D minis and you'll find them. Her name was Lola. <laughs> nice. Uh, just reading your comments here. It's funny stuff. Yeah, John, the minis are from the um, WizKids Deep Cuts line. Pathfinder Battles, actually, all of these. All right. Really bright orange. See that? Wow. It even looks more neon on camera. But that's okay. We are going to deal with that. It will not remain neon. I promise you. Wow, that looks way different on camera. That's better. I actually have to pick up some colors. So I'm actually having to kind of take some roundabout ways to get where I need to go. Um, 
GW paints aren't cheap. Um, but uh, but I just need to stock up on a bunch of colors, including some darker, deeper orange tones. But I'll just go backwards. Ba I'm basically going to reverse engineer the orange. So instead of putting a darker base coat, which is kind of the old school way to do it, or the standard way to, that most people do it, I'm actually going to go bright and then just use a wash to add shadow and shadows all in one kind of fell swoop. Is it bad that I'm I'm hearing Desposito in the background while I paint this red and orange dancing girl to my head? I'm a father to young girls, so don't judge me. Yeah, the beautiful thing about these minis is, um, especially with the townspeople and stuff, whether you play D&D &D or you play Pathfinder or some other system, they all apply. Like, they're all the same scale. And so it's very easy just to to pick what you want. I mean, I, I, those other minis that you see in the background here uh, on my Yawning Portal uh, set that we'll be using in our next gameplay session... Um, they they're reaper bone reaper bones minis um and they're awesome so it's a beautiful thing about this this hobby is it's it's your world you do what you want right you decide how you want to approach it and the things you want to do and the characters you want to feature and monsters you want to have and you you make it yours Very few other brands do that. I mean, that's why I tend to love D&D is, you know, the first thing Chris Perkins, the creative director in D&D &D will say is, um, you know, the first rule is to have fun. And the first rule is there is no rules. You know, the, 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 the materials that they give you, the books that they give you are just a guideline. They're a base point, a starting point. Hmm. Yeah, I'm kind of liking the orange. I am going to decide on a color to line her dress here with. So if any of you have a thought on that, um, I'm actually thinking even like a gold color because obviously she has all these kind of belly dancing gold pieces around her um, around her waist here on, on her belt and such. She's got a sash and things there, but anyways... Awesome. Looking good. All right. I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to paint some of that gold stuff next Next thing I'm going to do on her, and then I'm going to wash all of it with one color, um, which will be good. Okay. Back to this guy. All right. Well, that wash isn't quite dry yet, but you're seeing how dog hair. You're seeing how, what these washes do. They just instantly make the minis look better. They give more depth, right? Fix my light here a bit. There we go. All right. So it is 2.20 already. We are, we are running out of time, folks. Good call, John. I'll make sure to keep the Mickey D's out of it as much as possible. All right. Sorry, James. We already agreed on orange. You missed the boat on that one. <laughs> Okay, so next, what we're going to do um, is, like I said, I have to do the gold areas on her. I've got her to her boots 
which are down there. Um, I think I'm just going to use like a dryad bark for her boots. Mournfang brown. That's what I'm going to do because I'm going to use dryad bark for the base. So use my layer brush, grab a dollop of that color, add a little bit of water. Boom. We're in. Actually, I'm going to take it off. Off here. Like I said at the top of the show, folks, I have, um, we're really excited to have reached 2,000 subscribers on Facebook. Um, it's funny, it took us a long time to get that first thousand, and everybody said, oh, the first thousand is the hardest part. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, we've reached 2,000 uh, in a matter of months. I think it's been two or three months. Um, I mean, it's a lot of hard work, but we're really happy to, to be where we are. Um, and are really excited about the future. That's the first thing we want to say. We just want to thank everybody for their support um, and your continued support. It really means a lot. Uh, the other thing I wanted to say um, is that we have pretty big news that I can't announce today just yet, but we'll absolutely be following in the next few uh, week or two. Um, so stay tuned for that. It will change, possibly change the face of our channel, um, which is really exciting. So just uh, stay stay tuned for that. It's a very exciting announcement. Thanks, John. Uh, I use Vallejo paints as well. Uh, Army Painter has some really great stuff too. I just tend to use Citadel uh, as much as I do just because it's, like I said, it's so readily available um, at most craft stores. I'm using Retributor Armor, which is an amazing gold color. Really, really solid. Probably one of their best paints, in my opinion, because it goes on real nice and smooth. Like you'll see already, boom, just like that. Now I'm just going to paint this whole massive area on her belly gold she's got the bling there's no question um and right now it's really not going to look great against that orange but it will once we've washed it i'm convinced and if not then i quit not too worried about the the detail on this i mean you know i i we own a lot of the pre-painted midis that we use in our game um on a regular basis and um and these will be better painted than those i mean those are you know very just basically base coated some of them are washed um so it's just nice to be able to kind of control this like i said we've painted a number of these minis the whiz kid stuff lately We did a like a pirate captain and uh, did a tutorial on that and then live stream we did um what did we do what was the other one we did I'm trying to think now i can't think i'm gonna blame it on age Yeah, the technical paints, Citadel technical paints are awesome. They really are. I really would like to start to venture out into different paint lines. Just coming from the GW world and Warhammer, um, I just that's where I settled. That's what I know, and so that's what I stick to. But I'd love to to venture out for sure. I'm also going to paint her a little uh, bracelet at this point. Um, I don't know. Did I thin the gold? <laughs> I, uh, I'm on autopilot here. I, I tend to thin colors, uh, every time. Um, depending on the color, depending on how it comes out of the pot, depends on how much 
So there isn't like a formula for how much, but uh, I tend to thin them all of it. I, never, I rarely, rarely paint right out of the pot unless it's a wash or a dry paint. Even a dry paint, I tend to dry off a bit more than is in the pot. If you guys have any questions, no matter what it is, uh, even if you f feel it's a, it's a noob question or a, or, or a silly question, there are, there are none, guys. We're all at different levels along our journey for sure. Okay, I'm going to move to my Artificer Layer Brush for some more of these gold accents, especially this little tiny, this little tiny bracelet on her arm. I'm just sticking the gold here. I do find with these pre-painted minis, uh, sorry, these pre-primed minis, um, unpainted pre-primed, that uh, some of the paint does rub off on the extremities. You can see on the edge of the hand there, it's already come off. Um... So I'll just go in there. The nice thing is, is that even on the edges of the dress, but when I dry brush these or, or highlight, uh, apply highlights and stuff, that'll go away. So I'm not too worried about it at this point. Okay, all I have to do is that little string on her coming down from her belt. I'm going to do that red. And then dark hair. And then we're ready for... A wash. Sometimes if a paint comes out really, if it flows nice out of a, out of a pot, I don't bother. I don't bother thinning it, depending. Like I said, sometimes I'm on autopilot and I don't do it anyways. Well, since I have red on my brush, I might as well come in and highlight some of this. So basically what I'm doing is now I've moved on to the highlight stage. And so I am highlighting the um, uppermost edges of the dress here because I use that dark base coat. This is kind of a necessary step. Although you can see how that Rhinox is really given some decent depth in there. And the wash will just help to do that a bit more. A bit more on her, on her head. Cool. I do feel like there's some gold. Yeah, there is kind of a gold trim on top of her head. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit that too. And then I just have to do her hair and then it's wash time. A little bit more retributor. That's all dried up. Okay. Again, folks, make sure you catch our live stream uh, gameplay sessions where me and four of my friends sit in our epic game cave and play some good old D&D. &D. That's every other Monday right now. We're trying to transition to every Monday. Hopefully we'll be able to do that soon. But we have a blast. We're playing 5e, Storm King's Thunder. And the, the point of our of our channel and kind of the thing that I'd like to think separates us is that we hobby and so we create and craft and paint and then we use those and then we show you in our live gameplay sessions um, how what we what we do. And so we we take all that stuff that we've created and then show you how we apply them. Um, while well, we play D&D, &D, so it's a lot of fun. To check those out, just head over to, to YouTube, realmsmith.com slash, sorry, youtube.com slash realmsmith. Um, and then make sure that you subscribe and you hit that little bell icon to get notified of when we're playing, when we're live. All right, so for hair... For hair, uh, I want her to have dark hair. So because I want her to have dark hair, I'm going to go with black. This is a base. That's Abaddon Black. And then 
I'm just going to base coat her hair here. I probably should be using my layer brush, my bigger brush, but I'll just use my, I've already got it on the brush, so. Now at this point, um, you're now finishing last, last base coats, and so I'm being really careful on the areas that I've already base coated. At first, you don't care so much because you're base coating around areas that haven't been yet, but at this point, I'm being very intentional and careful around those, those spots. Half an hour, man. I find base coating typically takes the most amount of time, um, especially if you're if you're doing it to the quality that we are. So basically, just tabletop quality, so that it looks good at a foot away. And you can see I'm just turning my mini all kinds of angles, whatever it takes, to get a decent coat onto something is what you need to do. There we go. Says I'm having some interruption issues. I'm crashing a little bit. Everybody have a clear stream? Anybody experiencing any any streaming issues? Let me know how it looks to you guys. Quality seems like it's taking a bit of a hit as well. Maybe that's just on my end. Make sure you get all the little edges. So sometimes like even with um, just areas on your model where you think, meh, I don't have to go over that edge. Uh, you want things to feel like they have mass. And so even the hair here, right? You wanna make sure that you catch this other edge here just to give it mass and make it feel like it has shape and okay she is base coat oh no she's not spoke too soon forgot the hair in the front just as i was talking about mass Yeah, I'm getting some some buffering issues. I wonder why. Let me just check on what's going on here. I want to make sure you guys have a clear stream happening. Now, I don't think this is part of her hair, but I need to get in there because the the sculpt itself is a little a little wonky. So I just want to cover it all. There we go. Okay, it's getting there. You may have to go a little over two hours here, folks. We'll see. Or All right, but I know you believe in me. All right, so both are base coated. We'll go back to our farmer here. All of the washes have been, have dried. See, it pulled a little bit too much in this area here, you can see. So.
we want to be careful, right? Um, but that said, it's looking pretty good. So I think I'm going to go ahead. Um, and while she's drawing, I got some black paint on her chest there. Um, while she's drawing a little bit, I'm just going to set her aside and we're going to work on him. Uh, we're going to start with uh, some dry brushing. And I think that's what I'm going to do on him the most. Don't think I'm going to worry about like so, uh, smooth highlighting. Um, his pants are actually pretty good with that wash. So I'm just going to leave them the way that they are. They look pretty good. Um, so we're going to start with his shirt and his kind of overcoat deal. Um, what are we going to use here? I think I'm just going to use a, a Shapti bone. You know what? We're going to try a dry paint. So this is a Terminata stone. And I think I'm going to use that for his shirt. So we're going to go with my small dry brush. This is the older version of Citadel's dry brush line. And basically the dry brush, you're loading your brush. You can see the dry paints are like gunked in there. They're literally all dried up. And then you just get some onto your wipe as much as you can off. And then you're basically just dry running them along the edges of your mini. That is not coming off. That is not enough paint. So let's do that again. But these are intended to, uh, for dry brushing, these, these Citadel dry brush paints. There we go. It makes a little bit of a mess. You'll see some dust come off there. <laughs> it's got to blow. But these paints work fairly nicely. You can see that's already doing, doing its job. And I'm just hitting the tops of the folds. Our dog Hank is now up and walking around. Maybe I'll have him say hi in a second. I'm just running it in those areas there like that. Boom. Again, we're not worried about winning any competitions with this stuff. All right. Next, I'm going to continue to dry brush, but I'm going to use, um, let's see. Now, it's called Vomit Brown, but and it's called now it's called Tau Light Okra, I think. But anyways, this is the old Citadel version. I still have that. And the paint pot is still good, believe it or not. So I'm not going to switch yet. But I like to highlight uh, my Scrag Brown with that. So that's what, that's what we're going to do. And we're just going to run it against the grain on this. You can see that it's just highlighting ever so slightly as I run it across. And that's what we want. Again, he looks a little dirty, but that's okay. That's kind of our intention. We want him to look like he's been work in the fields. Hard day's work, it's not easy. I think I'm actually gonna use this color just for time and speed sake on the Morn Fang Brown as well. There we go. I'm just giving it a nice kind of brush. Typically, I would go in here and I'd edge highlight all the the, the leather and, um, or not typically, I guess if, if it was more of a showcase model, but for this case, we just want 
to get her done. All right. I'm going to go ahead and wash the skin now with Reiklin Flesh Shade. Use my glaze brush. All right, and I'm going to paint that Reiklin Flesh Shade almost right out of the pot because, again, these shades you don't have to worry about too much, right? And paint that shade right out of the pot onto the skin. And you don't want, again, for it to bunch up too much or clog up the detail. You don't want to get it on your other colors, but look at that. All of a sudden, right away, you have some great shadow on the skin. And so we're just going to do that on all the little skin parts. And I'm going to go ahead once, see? Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and throw that onto our dancing girl as well. Now I'm going to have to really get in there afterwards and clean up that face from when I mucked it up, but that's okay because we're going to add some highlight colors. I do tend to, on these minis, spend a little bit more time on facial features um, because those are the most obvious and... Um, uh, the most important in my opinion. So basically I'm just running this wash through over the mini so that we're getting definition and detail and shadow on the skin. And you can see how that's already happening. Then once that's dry, we'll go ahead and we'll start to... I should, at this point, it's probably okay that uh, while that wash is drying, that we go ahead and, and wash the rest of that mini. I think I'm gonna use, I'm gonna try Seraphim Sepia. It's my favorite brown wash. Uh, and it's got a bit of a, more of a sepia tone than a, than a dark kind of dirty tone. And we want her to be kind of vibrant. We don't want her to be too muted. Um, Anybody who just kind of joined us, love to hear where you guys are from. But here, guys, I'm doing the same thing, right? Letting that wash go into the recesses. Um, he is, Hank is just tearing through some stuff down here. I don't know what he's going through. Let's hope it's nothing important while I paint here. Look at that already on the back, for example. You're seeing how that is already making that orange kind of a bit more muted, making it look a little bit, you know, giving it that depth. We're also getting depth into this red area. Make sure you get it between areas too. That's important. That you let your washes settle between and in the cracks between colors because that'll just give some delineation between those colors bring it all together I'm just gonna use the same wash on her feet because they're hard to see anyways and on the bottom of her dress just because I'm a perfectionist and a little OCD sometimes okay well that worked really well so then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna continue that on her upper body And we're staying away from the skin that already has its own wash. That's already starting to dry. You want to make sure that you don't pull that wash away from that skin. So you don't want to get too close to where we've already applied that. Typically, I'd let that, that skin wash dry first, but we want to get this done in a decent amount of time for you folks. And then we're just going to throw it on the headdress as well. Just so we get some of that detail up there that there we go okay so we're gonna let that dry wash that brush make sure you wash your brushes take very good care of them they'll last longer
How's everybody doing out there? You all right? Again, any questions regarding any of the techniques we're using? What do you guys all play out there? What um, is it mostly D&D? Uh, &D? And if so, what um, edition do you guys play? I'm adding some black as a base tone. We have 15 minutes. We're not going to finish these in 15 minutes. Um, batch painting is, is, is definitely more effective and quicker when you have models with very similar, um, very similar colors across the model. So uh, in this case, you know, they're quite different models. And so we're not, we're not getting the same time saving as we would when I did all of the townspeople, or if we did the guards, for example, you'd get much more in that case, but, um, so it's taking us a little longer, but that's okay. If you guys are cool to stick around, I'm cool to stick around. Just filling in his beard here. There we go. I'm, I'm gonna have to come in there and add some more skin color to that after. There we go. Just base coating his beard. And then now that that's done, I'm actually just gonna highlight his um, his skin. For that, we're gonna use Cadian Flesh Tone. Actually, Hank wants to say hi. So let's just take a moment to say hi to Hank here. Come here, Hank. Hey everyone, this is Hank. Say hi, Hank. Hankles, Hank, Hankles. Hank's a Brussels Griffin. He's, uh, how old are you, bud? Less than a year. He's like, I don't know, six months, something like that. And he just hangs out here while I paint. And he's wonderful and a great dog. And if you can see him, he's pretty awesome. I know Vanessa has a bunch of cats. I'm a dog person and very allergic to cats. So, okay, say bye, Hank. Let's see if he lets me paint now, now that I've picked him up. I may have just... Yeah, he's trying to get up here again. <laughs> okay, okay. I know. I've created a monster. I get it. Okay, so I'm going to use my artificial la Artificer layer brush. So that's my finest um, detail brush that I'll be using. And I'll be using Kitty and Flesh Tone for the first layer on the on the skin. And the skin, like I said, I, I always take the most time on, on the faces and, and do the most detail work on faces because I find that it's, it, it, it's worth it. It shows up the best. Okay, Hank, okay. So basically what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna hit the, the high, uppermost areas. He's totally hitting my chair, it's so funny. Hank, buddy. Yeah, I know, I know, I know I'm busy, but you can't have my attention all the time. Nope, nope, okay. So basically I'm just going through here and I am highlighting the faces. Again, most prominent areas, nose, brow, cheekbones, like that. I do add eyes onto my minis, and I'll show you how to do that in a second. In fact, I probably should have done that before I started highlighting, but that's okay. Now that's all the skin, that's all for Kitty and Flesh, flesh Tone. Again, this mini, you know, it doesn't look the best up close. You know, you've got lots of like color coming through here, and but you know, down on your table, more than enough. Not too worried about this mini being stellar. Again, typically, on a mini, on a more of a showcase mini, I would have gone in and done a ton of detail work in there. Um, but there really isn't a need. Um, yeah, no kidding. Yeah, we all, all we have all kinds of names for him. Harry, uh, Hank Harry Pitts. Hanky Pank. Hanky Stank sometimes, depending on what he's eating. Okay, 
Now, eyes. Again, every one of my videos, I always say that they're most daunting or tend to be the most daunting, but they are really not. Basically, what I'm doing is I'm just doing a white line across there. And it's, whoa, see that? So, again, this happens every time. So, I will, my white area will be way too big. It's not often at all that I actually get this, the right amount of white in there. I always get too much. You can see that. But never fear. Never fear. Because now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some black and, and dot in the pupils. Again, you want this to be fairly, I don't say watery, but you want it to flow really well because you don't want to be jabbing. You want as little paint in there as possible, but you want it to be to actually get in there. So let's get this nice and close. And I'm just going to dab. That wasn't very great. I might have to add some more white there. Yep. Okay. So I've now bummed it up. But basically what I'm doing with eyes is I, I go back and forth. It's trial and error. Do my best. I get in there with the white. Okay. That's not so bad on that side. They're huge. But then I'm going to go back in with my skin colors and then I'm going to tidy them up. Go back in there with some white. But it's basically like trial and error, back and forth. You're just trying to this these eyes are giving me a hard time today. It's also really hard to paint on camera. Okay. Horrible, right? Big anime eyes. Well, watch this. Now I'm gonna go back in with Bugman's Glow, which was my original skin color. Thumbs, I like it. <laughs> oh, just bumping the camera here. Real pro, Jay. Real pro. Okay. Yeah, Spike, we play 5e. Really love 5e here, here too. Okay, so I'm just going to come back in now and just touch up the edges. Touch up on the nose because a little bit too much white went in there. And now you're just going through and getting rid of some of that some of the anime eye effect. That huge eye effect. These aren't the greatest, but again, for this case, I'm not going to toil over them. Because you get the idea of what they're trying to do here, right? Um, then I'm going to come in. Hank is getting into everything over here, folks. No, oh, stop it. Stop it. Okay. He's had his nap. Now he wants to play. Okay. So then I do also like to do um, eyebrows. Not everybody does. But I just find that people without eyebrows are just weird. I mean, if naturally you don't have eyebrows, I'm just saying like... Aliens typically don't have eyebrows. So, uh, just gonna, just like that, just a little bit on the top. And that tends to give you a cleaner eye. That's it. So again, not the best eye, eyes, they're, but they're functional. They work, they do the trick. Um, I am gonna come in with a little bit of skin color in the, um, Stop. Hank, come here. No. He's at the chewing stage. He's definitely teething, and so he just wants to chew on everything. Uh, okay, so we're just going to add a little bit more. There. I think I want to be done, him, uh, for the most part. He's pretty good for, for what I need him to be and for the function that I need him to be. I'm not going to paint him to a crazy standard because, again, he's just going to be kind of background background uh, scenery for the most part. Um, players won't interact with him all that much. So, you know, they might, but that's not his purpose. All right, so we're back to our dancing girl who is vibrant and bright. 
Um, that wash is still drying in the recesses there. Um, so we may do her eyes actually first. So let's do that real quick. Uh, Yvonne, that's great. Yeah, I mean, WizKids and, and, and Reaper and all those kinds of companies have made it so great for us and given us so much to play with. I remember back in the day, I mean, we, we used to do, when I was a teenager, we used to just play Theater of the Mind. Didn't even use minis. But there's just so much great stuff out there, it's hard not to now. There we go. This one's going to be a bit easier to do. I think. There you go. Already she's doing a bit better. Hank, stop it. What are you doing? No, you can't have a pencil. You can't have the pencil. You're not allowed. You're not allowed. Okay, so we got in the black here. Do, 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 do. Add a little water to this. And we'll come back and come in here. Again, you want it to be a really nice, fine tip. I'm getting a rogue hair, hair bristle here. Uh, get you on camera and just. Oh, she worked out well. This is going to be a good one. See that? Cat eyes to start. Then I'm going to go in and tidy those bad boys up. All right. Bugman's Glow again, and I'm going to touch up that. I'm going to touch up those eyes. That brow that I got last time, I'm going to paint that and fix that. Around her eye here, which is a little dark. Her eyes are a bit big here, so. And on her nose. And I don't think I even need. Because those eyes worked out so well, I'm not even going to need a brow for her. Just going to tidy up that left eye, because it's a, or that right eye, because it's a bit much. All right, done, beautiful. So then, now that the wash is dry, I'm going to go in and I'm going to highlight. Okay, I'm going to go in and I'm going to highlight this, the skin. So, basically I'm running this kitty and flesh tone everywhere that isn't the deepest recesses in this area. And I'm, I've watered down a fair amount because I want it to, to run smooth. And so cheekbones, nose, forehead. Other cheekbone. We're just going to run it around on her there. She's got a weird piece of plastic sticking out here, so we just got to... Okay, then we're going to do on the outside of her arm, her hand, and then we're going to run just simple lines down her fingers. And we're basically just adding highlights to this arm. 
And I had a little bit of red there from her dress that I just covered over. No problem. I do want her to be a little bit darker in skin tone. So, and I'm just following the muscle forms here in her skin. See that? I'm just, just trying to catch her, her muscle tones. But I do want her to have a darker kind of olive skin tone, so I'm not going to do a lot of this. In fact, I may not even extreme highlight it because I want her to have a darker tone. I'm going to go around her hand here. This is where we're fixing that edge that wiped off, even on this side. There's a little bit of black hair I got there that I can clean up now. And just running down on her fingers there. I may just do one more tone or one more extreme highlight. But we'll see. I don't like how hard this line of a clavicle is, so I'm just going to... There we go. Nice. The rest of the uh, wash is almost dry, so at that point, when that when that wash is dry, we can go ahead and highlight the dress. All right, back to this guy. Is there anything else we want to do? I think we're done here. Um, I'm just going to later, um, we're, we're running out of time here, so I'm just going to base coat that. And then uh, with a, um, I usually use dryad bark for the base. I'll dry brush it and his and the, his uh, little guy. Um, what's it called? <laughs> Rake all in one. So I'm just going to give you a turn of what we did so far on him. I think I'm going to abandon him for now. Uh, I might highlight his beard too a little bit, but basically... He's as good as I need him to be. Again, he's not pro quality. Uh, we're not run, winning any competitions, but he's a lowly farmer. There, hardworking man. All right. Now on this one, we are absolutely going to do some more on her. Um, I'm going to go ahead now and do kind of my final extreme highlight on her skin with Kislev Flesh. Artificer layer brush. We're going to grab some more color here. This is the lightest color that we're going to use. And we're basically just hitting the top most areas or the, the highest. Just giving one last highlight on the edge of her fingers here, on her elbow, on her cheekbone, there and there, and on the tip of her nose, as well as on her chin, on the bottom of her face. And that's added all the all the highlights we need there on the top of her hand here, as well as on her knuckles, like that, along this muscle there, that muscle there, on her stomach, and along this one. That's it. We're basically just just touching those those shapes, just touching those areas to give some more d depth. Beautiful. Now, for the red part of her dress, we are going to highlight that with Evil Sun Scarlet, which is this kind of light red color. Small dry brush. We're going to load up our brush like this, and then we're going to wipe most of it off onto a paper towel until you hardly have any left. And then again, we're unfortunately the the wash hasn't really dried in the recesses, so we're just gonna be really careful not to hit it. But here we go, like that, and then down here, like that, and a lot of this is covering kind of those areas that wiped off, and you're seeing primer through, or kind of got rubbed a little bit, but. Just like that, and then over here, we're just, and then on her head, we're also doing the same. Just like that. 
All right. And then then on that same red area, I'm actually going to bring it all together and use some Troll Slayer Orange as a highlight on the red. Right here. So we're just going to go through here on the red and just hit those high areas with the Troll Slayer Orange. Just on the edge of it. We did the same on the dress for the older lady that's sweeping in our last batching tutorial. Just gonna just like that. See you, John. Good luck, buddy. Thanks, man. Thanks for coming out. I'm getting pretty happy here. I'm I'm gonna now go back on the orange parts, and I'm gonna use uh, what am I gonna use? I'm gonna use an Avalon Sunset actually on uh, that as a dry brush to highlight that orange. Hopefully it's bright enough. I don't know if it will be. Let's see. No, I don't think it is. So we're gonna go away from Avalon Sunset, and we're gonna go real bright with Flash Glitz Yellow. Get some of that on our brush. Wipe most of it off. And then we're gonna just hit the edge. There we go. Oh, too much. Not dry brush enough. There. Definitely don't want it to be an overbrush. You want it to be a dry brush. And that's really bringing out that color. Look at that. And actually, I'm hitting some of the red on that thing, and it looks fine. I may even hit some of this right up here. Just trying to tie it all together. Even some of the orange, or the red, sorry, I'm hitting that as well. We're just getting paint on minis here. We're There we go. I'm just getting them tabletop ready. There's a lot of glare off these minis, but you can see what we're doing here. Okay. There. Now that, I count that dress pretty good. Uh, you can see that even like some of the paints come off this. I'll have to go back and fix some of that. But her back looks really great. You can see that, how nice that looks. Really, really nice back there. Look at that. Right. Uh, last two things we're gonna do is I am going to dry brush her shirt. with Terminata Stone again. And that's just gonna be to, to provide some highlights in her um, kind of the cotton shirt here. So we're just gonna get the shirt here and we're going to just run it through here. Remember, you gotta be careful not to hit the, the red areas or the orange areas. We're just hitting the highs. I don't think I want to do her hair that color. No, I don't. I want to use like a different color for that. So that's how she's coming along here. And then for her hair, we're actually going to use a blue color. It's kind of a bit of a comic book secret. Um, we are going to use... Not that one. Not that one. We're going to use a Cantor blue color and we are going to wash our dry brush so we're not getting any red or yellow in there dry it off as much as possible we're going to get a little bit of Cantor blue here pull it off and then we're going to hit that hair and that's just going to give it a bit of a, a bit more color I 
I am pulling, you can see I'm actually pulling black off that, guys. So that's, again, maybe if I washed it, it would have been a bit better. I don't know, um, but that's a bit of an issue. So instead, uh, Hank is losing his mind here. Stop, honey. Uh, he's losing his mind here. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to go and do a Dark Reaper color instead. The Dark Reaper is kind of a... A smoky blue. We're gonna do a bit more of an overbrush. Little trick, just to cover over. You know what? I'm not even gonna use that brush because it's coming out off a lot. I'm gonna use and just overbrush with my detail, my layer brush here. All right, and then I might wash that. I'm gonna wash that with a null no, no, no oil and that'll bring it all together. So there's some touch-ups to be done, but those are, that's them guys. So just over three hours. In fact, you know, in painting time, we're actually just over, two, yeah, two hours, sorry. But we, I think we were just over two hours because we probably started about quarter after. So we were not doing too bad. Um, this is the Gypsy. I'll take pictures of the final, final product when I'm done. But I'll probably finish her off camera. But you can see simple techniques to get where you want to go. She looks really great right here in the Yawning Portal Tavern. And she dances for everybody. And then again, our little farmer guy. Who will not farm in the tavern. Well, folks, thanks so much. I'm not sure why my other camera isn't working here. One sec. I'm not sure why we're... Again, guys, when you have uh, a sec, check out us out on our Facebook page. If you're not already there watching us now, um, make sure to follow as well as like the page. And you can get all of the updates of when we do what we do. Um, we have lots of crafting tutorials and painting tutorials. We do a lot of live stuff. It was great. Um, catch those. Uh, check out our YouTube channel. We have a ton of videos on there as well um, for your viewing pleasure. Uh, we do live gameplay sessions every... Uh... Here, I'm going to switch it up here, guys, so we can say bye. My other camera <laughs> died out on me. Here we go. Um, make sure that you check us out on the YouTube. Uh, we have lots of tutorials on there, uh, like I said, uh, for painting and crafting and our live gameplay sessions uh, every other Monday with me and my buddies playing some good old D&D &D in, our, in our game cave. Um, as well, keep an ear out for our big um, announcement that'll be coming in the next week or two, which we're really, really excited about. Can't wait to tell you guys. Uh, and that's it. Thanks so much. Realmsmith out. We'll see you again soon.